And hello once again. Welcome to the Employment Law Show. John Scholes, Lior Sanfiri here to fill your mind full of amazing knowledge when it comes to your workplace and severance and your job. And if you're a boss or an employer, this show counts just as much to you as well. Anytime you want to reach out, 1-855-821-5900, help at employmentlawyer.ca. We will discuss on the show today, I know your mind's going to travel already, but uh, things you should never do if you're an employee. Uh-oh. I'm sure we can come up with our own list of 10 or 20 in that regard, but these ones are the ones you really got to watch out for, so that is coming up. Pocket Employment Lawyer, we'll talk about that website if you want to check it out right now. Do so, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. So we got a full basket of things to whittle our way through. Brother, we always start with the, uh, the week that was. How are you? Yeah, John, great to be back Good. here to talk about employment law and workplace rights. And, uh, you know, not a week goes by when someone doesn't stop me, either on the street, sometimes on the, on the train, uh, and they say, well, I watched your show and it raised some things and I appreciate you doing that. So I I'm so glad to hear that because I think a lot of people that watch the show are now more informed about their workplace rights. There's a lot of misconceptions. The idea behind the show all these years ago was misconceptions, dealing with those and busting those myths. So I I'm so happy that we're able to talk uh, to people about your workplace rights, employment law. If you have a workplace issue, a workplace problem, maybe something happened at work, now you're wondering what your rights are. Can you do something? Do you have a, a case or a right? Well, stay tuned. We'll talk about so many things here every single week. And if you want to talk to me privately, if you don't think we've covered your specific concern on the show, we'll give you that contact information throughout the show. No bad questions. There's only answers. There's only solutions. So reach out to me anytime. But week there was, John, a couple situations, at least one situation that came across my desk just over the past uh, few days. I spoke with a gentleman that uh, a couple months ago, he was placed on a temporary layoff. Sure. Uh, and his boss said, this is the slow time of year for us, so we're going to lay you off and hopefully call you back uh, within six, or six weeks or so. So he followed up with them after six weeks. He'd been sitting at home, not earning income. That's right. And he said, well, it's been six weeks. Uh, when am I coming back to work? He said, we still don't know. We'll check in with you for uh, another six weeks and another six weeks. Well, that's when he got frustrated and he reached out to me. He said, Lear, it's been six weeks. They told me, uh, told me I'm only going to be gone for six weeks. Now they're telling me another six weeks, still no guarantees. What do I do here? What are my rights? Well, here's the thing. What I told him, and I, hopefully our regular viewers know this, but he was surprised, is the temporary layoff to begin with, when they first implemented it, was illegal. That layoff in itself was a termination. He did not have to wait that, that six weeks. He did not have to wait at all. He could have treated that as a termination. So what I told him is, no, you don't have to sit at, ho at home and hope that maybe at some point they'll call you back to work. Why don't we treat this as a termination? Get you severance, and then you can move on to a different job. Now, John, he had been with this company for 10 years. He's probably looking at a year's pay, which I'm going to help him get. And I wanted to bring this up here because... If they had called him back to work after six weeks, he wouldn't have known that the layoff was illegal. And if they had laid him off again after that, at that point, he wouldn't have been able to do anything about it because he let it happen. So I wanted to bring this up. This is very important. If you've been placed on a temporary layoff, in most cases, that is a termination. In most cases, that is not something the company is allowed to do. And if they do that, you can treat that as a termination, get your severance and move on. And that's better to do it that way than to allow it to happen and to come back to work and then give the company the right to do it again. Not a good way to work if you're coming back to work, work for a couple of months, then go off for a couple of months. Not a very good way to, to earn income. So if you're in a layoff situation, even if the company says, no, no, we plan on calling you back, you want to reach out to me, that may be a termination. Now, he, he was off for six weeks, and is there a length of time where he could have pulled the plug earlier or beyond a certain point where he can't, or it's after he was called back? So once he's called back to work, if he does go back to work, it's too late to pull the trigger. He could have pulled the trigger on a termination on day one or, you know, much later. But in this situation, the only reason he called, if they called him back after six weeks, he wouldn't even have thought of, uh, of this being illegal. He would have gone back to work. And the problem with that is if he had gone back to work and six weeks later they say another layoff, now he's stuck. Now he can't do anything about it. So that's what we want to try to avoid that happening. If you've been on a, put on the layoff, on that first day, the first day when you get that letter and you're told today you're on a, lay a layoff moving forward, you can treat that as a termination, get your severance. You don't have to wait. Employmentlawyer.ca, that is the online space you want to populate and find out all kinds of things about this show as well as our radio show, which has been going on for years and years. We got a ton of phone calls on that show, as I'm sure you've heard before. We take them, we play them back here, and uh, you get informed and we talk about them. Our first call for the day is right now. 
I worked for a gentleman for 11 years. I was diagnosed with breast cancer, so I was off for 10 months. I'm happy to say I'm doing fantastic now. Excellent. I went into work to say I'm ready to go back to work, and he said, I'm sorry, it's been slow, you're laid off. He's been a really nice gentleman over the years. He's been good to everybody, but people were pretty shocked that I was out of work for 10 months and I wasn't offered a dime. Doesn't sound so nice or, or so gentlemanly the end, yeah. to me, you know. So let's break this down. So she's going goes off on a medical condition, cancer. You know, fortunately, she seems like she's doing better. That's wonderful. But the fact that she's off on a leave does not mean she loses her job. She's still an employee. So what happens when she's ready to come back to work? When she's ready to come back to work, the company has to make all efforts to bring her back, to make efforts to find the, the same position if it's available, if it's not, to find a similar position. It's only after they've exhausted those, offer, th those opportunities, they've exhausted those efforts, that they, if they can't find anything, that they're allowed to terminate. So in this situation, I don't know if they've actually exhausted those opportunities or those efforts. Did they try to find a position for her? If they did not, that could be a human rights violation. Right off the bat, if they're letting you go, well, you took a leave, we don't want you back, you're gone. That's a human rights violation. That's illegal. That's discrimination based on a disability. But if they did and they really didn't have a job, they tried, but there's no job, now it's a termination. It's not a layoff. It's not a temporary layoff. Remember what we said about temporary layoffs uh, earlier on the show. So she's now been let go. Fine but she has to get paid severance. So she's been there for 11 years. I, I don't know exactly what job she had and how old she is, but she probably is looking at a year's pay, perhaps even more than that. Oh. So if she's been laid off with no compensation, that's a wrongful dismissal. That's potentially a human rights violation. It's illegal. Same thing for you to remember, if you're on a medical leave, doesn't matter if it's for a month or a year or two years, you have a right to be, uh, to be given all opportunities to come back to the same job. It's only if that job is not available and there's nothing else that the company can give you that makes sense that they're allowed to terminate, but with full severance. You're not sure what that is. You can always go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca or call me, but you have to get paid. Two quick questions about this one. She was gone for 11 months, so you have to assume that the employer probably would have had someone covering her job. What if it turns out that the person they had replacing her is an absolute rock star. They love the person. So they want to keep them in that position, so they've got to find her another job. Um, you said similar jobs, so it has to be commensurate income or 50%, 60%, or where does it have to land? So the company does not require to, to let go of the person that's been covering for her. They can't say, they, they're not required to say, well, we're going to fire this person so you can have the, your job back. So if there is someone that's filling that position, they have to look outside of that position and look for another job. But it has to be similar, both in terms of responsibilities and compensation. Okay. So if, it's, if you're looking at more than a 10% pay difference, that's going to be a constructive dismissal. If you're looking at responsibilities that are lesser or less senior position, something that could be viewed as a demotion, right. again, it's a constructive dismissal. That's not going to fly. It has to be similar. And, you know, it, it is really every situation is different. So if you are in that situation, if you're not sure if the position they have offered you is the same, is it similar enough, should you accept it, should you not, Best to give me a call before you do anything, and we can discuss it and decide what's best thing to do in your case. Now, that's a medical leave. Parental leave, different story. Very different. Right. If you're taking a maternity leave or your father taking a parental leave, if you're coming back to work, the company has to give you that same job. Okay. Even if it means firing that person that was doing your job in your absence, there's no choice. The Employment Standards Act requires that. The same doesn't apply to a medical leave but you still have to or be given every opportunity to come back to work. Again, reaching out is real simple. 1-855-821-5900, help at employmentlawyer.ca. And we mentioned it a couple times during the show. I want to get into this because it's, uh, it's huge and it's, it's gaining steam for sure. Pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, give me some details. So if you have legal issues, uh, or questions or workplace concerns. If you've been let go and you want to know how much severance you owe, the first place you go to is you grab your smart, uh, smartphone, you go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Again, it's pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. It takes seconds, it's free, it's anonymous. You don't have to put in your name or the company's name and you can find out so much about your rights. It's like having a mini version of me, yes, we've done that, uh, in <laughs> your pocket with you at all times. Pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. First place, obviously, if you, you're looking at a severance letter and you want to know whether that severance offer is fair. But maybe you've, you think you may have been constructively dismissed. Answer some questions, find out if you were. Maybe the company said, hey, we have cause to let you go. 
Is that right? Is it not? We'll answer a couple of questions, find out right there. Maybe you've been discriminated against or been a victim of workplace harassment. You want to know if you have entitlements or you have a case. Answer a few questions, find out. It's like having your own employment lawyer with you all the time on your phone, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. As we say, we want to take it out for a spin. We got this uh, contact from a viewer who says, uh, I've been working at a car dealership for around two years. Despite consistently meeting performance quotas, my manager always singles me out and criticizes my work in front of others. Last month, she raised my sales quota by 75%. I was the only one given this new target. Uh, the owners say there's nothing they can do. Wow. wow. Well, you know, let, let's start with the, the, the low-hanging fruit, yep. so to speak. It's that 75% change in, in, in tar or targets or quotas. So the reality is if your quota, your targets are being changed by 75%, you're not going to make the same level of income. You're going to be taking a pay cut. So right off the bat, that's going to be a constructive dismissal. Yep. If your boss tells you, and it doesn't have to be in the same scenario, but we're going to make it more difficult for you to earn income. We're going to change the, the, the goal line so that now all of a sudden you're not going to get the same bonus, the same commissions, the same salary. If that's the case, you don't have to accept that. You can treat that as a termination. You can treat that as a constructive dismissal. But here she also touches on workplace harassment issues. She's saying that she's been uh, you know, picked on. She, uh, she's been singled out even though she's been meeting her, her target. So let's take her information. Let's plug that into pocketemploymentlawyer.ca and let's see what we get here. So in this particular situation, we know she's been there for two years. Uh, who's the one harassing her? She, the answer would be the manager. The type of harassment that she's looking at, again, unreasonable demands. It's just a drop-down menu you pick on pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. And then a couple of other questions. Is she still employed with the company, et cetera? And you can see the result at the bottom there. Yes, that this does appear to be inappropriate harassment. It does qualify as workplace harassment. Not every situation does. But just in answering a few questions in a matter of seconds, you can find out, yes, that's inappropriate. That's illegal. That's something that you could do something about. So pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, it works just as easily. If you want to, there's a button there you can press to contact me with your situation so that I can actually help you resolve that issue, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. And coming up, lots more. In fact, we're going to get to this one, things you should never do if you're an employee. So stick around for that. These are very important. 1-855-821-5900. Email as well. Help at employmentlawyer.ca. This is the Employment Law Show. Stick around. Lots more coming up. You lost your job. They only gave you two weeks of severance per year worked. But where can you find out what you're really owed? I'm going to severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you're owed right now. SeverancePayCalculator.com You've been denied long-term disability. You think you're powerless, but you have a lot more power than you think. I'll tell you a secret. It's a numbers game for the insurance company. They're betting on you walking away from money that they owe you. Don't make that mistake. We resolve disability claims all the time. We force insurers to pay what they owe. We're in your corner. Call Savannah and his team, 1-855-821-5900, or go to disabilityrights.ca. You lost your job. They said they had a good reason, but you think you've been wrongfully dismissed. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. And welcome back, Employment Law Show. John Scholes, Lior Samfiru, uh, 1 855 821 5900 to reach out, employmentlawyer.ca online. You can catch a link and where to find our radio shows every week. And as mentioned, I want to get right into this. This is if you're an employee, things you should never do. So listen up to these. I'm sure we've all been there or you don't want to be there. Number one is this make assumptions about your employment rights, right? Yeah, that is. And, and we really want to talk about some things that you don't want to do so that you don't give up your rights. I always say on the show that the employment laws are great, actually. In this province, across Canada for that matter, employment laws are terrific. They're, they're very extensive and they provide good protections for employees. But employment laws can also be given up. You can do things that give up your rights. So we want to talk about how you preserve your rights, how you don't give them up by making certain mistakes. So the starting point, as you said, is don't make assumptions. Let's, let's not make assumptions about our workplace rights. Don't assume that you know what the law is or how much you're owed, let's say, if you lost your job. So many people assume, oh, I know if I lose my job. Year. A week per year. So the other half of the room is going to say, no, it's two weeks per year. Well, guess what? They're both wrong. It's not even close to that. The law can't help you unless you give it the opportunity. And the first 
a part of, the, uh, of that process is finding out what your rights are, not making assumptions, not going to Google University, as John says, not calling your uncle who one time had a, a business or so he may know things. No, you have to do the right thing, get legal advice. You don't like me, speak to another employment lawyer. Go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. There's so many ways you can find out your rights. The law is quite good, but you cannot make assumptions. You cannot believe that you know. You wouldn't make assumptions about your health. You wouldn't say, oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this medical condition of mine is fine. I'm not going to worry about it. Good. You would seek advice. You would speak with a professional, with a yep. doctor. Well, the same thing about your workplace rights. We make it easy to get that information. Take advantage. Something else as an employee you should never do is this, accept significant changes to the terms of your employment. We just talked about We it. talked about that, but we always talk about that because it's such an important thing. If your employer makes significant changes to the terms of employment, compensation, work hours, schedule, work location, responsibilities, that is not something your employer is allowed to do. You have the right to refuse that and if needed to treat that as a constructive dismissal. The problem is some say, and I, I see this all the time, well, you know, I kind of feel bad. I want to be the good soldier, yep. the good team player, so I'm going to accept this change. That's admirable. Don't get me wrong. It's quite admirable. The problem with doing that is by allowing that to happen, you know, that change, maybe the change to your compensation or your bonus structure, you give the company the right to do it again. And that's how you give up your rights. You only have one kick at that can when it comes to changes to the terms of employment. If you allow it to happen, then the next time your employer wants to make an even bigger change, you may not be able to do anything about it. So the law says, employer, no, no, you're not allowed to do that. But if the employee lets you do it, then yeah, we're going to say it's fine. That's a surefire way to give up on your rights. Don't let that happen. If your employment terms have been changed, you want to stand up for, the, for those rights, you can go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca to find out if that change is legal or not. You can call me, you can email me, but don't ignore it. Another thing you should never do as an employee is accept a verbal termination, a verbal. And, and here's what I mean by that. You know, if you've been called into a meeting or someone called you up, your boss and said, we're letting you go, Here's my concern. We now need to get you severance. Well, what's to stop this employer to say, oh, no, no, we didn't let him go. He, he quit. quit. Yeah. If you have nothing in writing confirming that, the employer, once they realize, wait a second, now we have to pay him 18 months severance? They say, no, no, let's just say that he quit. I've seen that happen. So if you've been let go verbally, by phone, in person, uh, over a coffee, whatever it is, first thing you do, you go back home, you grab your smartphone, you send an email. Now, immediately, confirming what, what happened. So, boss, I confirmed that uh, today at noon, you told me that you're letting me go. Put that in, in writing, right there, on the spot. Don't wait three days. Don't wait any period of time. Do it as soon as possible. Because by doing that, you've created that record. You make it difficult for the company to say that you quit. And that means it's much easier than for us to get you the severance that you're owed. I don't like a verbal termination. You follow up in writing. What if he doesn't reply? That's good enough. Right. Even if the boss doesn't reply, you sending that email, his failure to reply, it's acceptance. Because right. clearly, if you had resigned, you would have said, what are you talking about? Right. No, no, you quit. We didn't let you go. Nice. So send that email right away or a text message, anything in writing. We are talking about the things you as an employee should never do in the workplace during your career. And this is a big one. This is almost how we started the show, really. And that is call the Ministry of Labor if you lose your job. Sorry for rolling my eyes, but no, <laughs> you, you, you can't. And John, not a week goes by. Not a week goes by still. As much as you and I have talked about this, where people don't call and tell me, I contact the Ministry of Labor. They told me I'm only owed a week's pay per year of service. Or I filed a complaint, they only got me three weeks severance, now what do, I, what do I get? So the Ministry of Labor is not the place you, have, you can go to at all if you lose your job. Because the Ministry of Labor can only advise you with respect to your minimum entitlements. Your full entitlements, what we call your common law entitlements, can be ten times that or more. So the Ministry of Labor is not going to be able to help you. And in fact, unfortunately, they're going to provide misleading information. If you call the Ministry of Labor and say, I've worked for the company for three years, what do I get? They will tell you three weeks. Don't believe me, call them right now. In reality, you could easily be owed six months pay or more than that. And the Ministry of Labor will only advise you about your minimum entitlements, not your full entitlements. And God forbid, if you actually file a complaint with the right, Ministry of Labor, ask, yeah. then not only do you not get what you're owed, we already know that, you're now, now prevented from actually pursuing your full entitlements. So, using my three-year example, okay, company didn't give me three weeks pay, so I'll file a complaint with the Ministry of Labor. Ministry of Labor gets you three weeks pay, but then you can't actually get your full entitlements. You're not allowed 
to pursue your full entitlements. So you could have walked away from five, six months pay just like that. Don't let that happen. You, you lost your job. You speak with an employment lawyer. You pretty much do anything. Honestly, a Ouija board, I think, would be better than going to the Ministry of Labor. Anything but that. Another thing you should never do as an employee is accept an unfair performance review, right? Absolutely. Turtle. The problem with an unfair, again, the, the keyword is unfair. If it's a legitimate performance review, it's accurate, it is what it is. But if it's unfair, it's not accurate, it's not factual, by accepting it, you're giving the company the right to potentially consider letting you go for cause. You're helping the company build a case against you. So at some point, maybe they could pull the trigger on the termination for cause. So if the performance review is unfair, say so. Say so in writing, explain why, give the facts, give your perspective. Tell the, inf the, the employer why they got it wrong. Give them the information that they need. By doing that, number one, you're not just accepting it, and you're making it that much harder for the company to consider letting you go for cause. A great way to stand up for your rights, not to give up those rights, is to respond to an unfair performance review or an unfair performance improvement plan. Put that in writing. Preserve your rights. Again, these are lists of things you should know. Well, a, a small list of a massive list of things you should never do as an employee. And we'll wrap it up with this one. That is sign an employment contract without having it reviewed. An employment contract is one of the most important documents you will ever sign. Job offer letter, employment agreement, employment contract are the same thing. Uh, it governs your rights in the workplace. And we spend 2,000 hours plus in work every single year. So it's an important document. And what people don't understand often, and I've said this on the show before, is when it comes to an employment agreement, less is more for the employee. In fact, you'd rather not have an employment contract, not have an employment agreement. Take the job on a handshake, much better. Because oftentimes what an employment agreement does is either it limits your rights or it takes them away completely and gives them to the employer. So you want to be very careful. There could be terms in an employment contract that limit your severance to a fraction of what it otherwise would be. There could be terms in an employment contract that allow the company to lay you off temporarily or that allow the company to change your job and change your compensation and many other things. Terrible thing to just sign it without looking at it carefully. Many people just look at the salary, how much vacation. That's not the only thing that are important. There's things that are arguably even more important. Have it reviewed. If you're asked to sign an employment agreement, let me see it. Let me tell you what it means. And if you're not asked to sign a contract, be happy. Don't ask to sign one. Just start working. Again, anything sound familiar or more questions about it, reach out. Call 1-855-821-5900 or employmentlawyer.ca. Again, that is the place you go to find our radio show and listen to past shows and catch the phone calls and answer some more questions on your own as well. Phone call number two for this show is coming up right now. I was just let go from my company, and I've been there 12 years, and I got a severance package. I was just wondering, do they do it like two weeks for, um, for 12 years payout, or is it a week for every year? Break. I'm in my 50s. I was just general labor in a warehouse. They offered me six weeks. <laughs> there, you, there you go. Is it a week? Is it two? Is it a week? We talked it about. Well, it's neither. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot more than that. And that's, that call we just had here, that, that call we just played, is a classic example of why we're on this show, why we started the show all these years ago, because of the fact that many people believe certain things that are wrong. And when it comes to severance, it can cost you a lot of money. So rather than me tell you how much he's owed, let's, let's take the pocket employment lawyer for a spin again. Let's input that information into the, uh, the pocket employment lawyer.ca so find out how much she's actually owed. So she's a warehouse laborer. She's been there for 12 years. I picked an age. Let's say she's 56 years old. I just picked kind sure. of an age. I don't know her age exactly. And she told us she was given six weeks pay. Well, the pocket employment lawyer.ca correctly assesses her as being owed 14 to 16 months pay, not weeks. weeks. Months pay. Now, depending on our compensation level, that could, well, that's going to be tens of thousands of dollars, regardless of whether she makes 30000 or 130000 It's going to be a lot of money that, that she's owed. That's how easy it is. And, and don't believe misconceptions. You have this tool. You have Pocket Employment Lawyer with you. Why not use it? PocketEmploymentLawyer.ca. Coming up here after we get uh, through a break, employment, employment rights rather when you're downgraded through a demotion. Oh, we'll get to that. 1-855-821-5900. Uh, help at employmentlawyer.ca to reach out as well. Employment Law Show continues. Stick around. You were being harassed, and when you said something about it, you're the one who lost your job. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. 
Insurance companies deny long-term disability claims all the time. They give lots of excuses. Don't give up. I've seen it all. They've ignored your doctors, they've ignored you. You're angry and you're frustrated, but there's hope. We resolve disability claims all the time. We force insurers to pay what they owe. We're in your corner. Call Savannah and his team, 1-855-821-5900, or go to disabilityrights.ca. You thought you had a secure job. You didn't see it coming. Now what do you do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. And welcome back, Employment Law Show, reaching out 1-855-821-5900 and employmentlawyer.ca. If you haven't checked it out yet, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. It's pretty much anything under the sun that he can handle. You can have a pocket-sized version on your phone or on your desktop, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. If you go to employmentlawyer.ca, you will catch uh, past episodes of not only this show, but our radio show. As you know, we play the phone calls from the radio show on this and get some opinion, and we chat about them. Phone call number three for today is, uh, is right now. A few weeks ago, I was called into work, and I was middle management, and they demoted me, and I lost over $14,000, and they said at the time the only job available was like a clerical position. So now I'm reporting to someone who used to report to me. I asked if I was being terminated. They said no, because they felt that there was a job there for me. It would have been better had they terminated me to give me a, a package. Do I have any legal recourse? How long have you been with this employer? 25 years. Wow. How long ago? did this change happen? About three weeks ago. Yeah. Less money and a demotion. That's nice. Oh my, a lot less money, a lot uh, less of a senior position. Yep. That is a constructive dismissal. The company does not have a right to do that. That's not even close. Oftentimes we're, you know, trying to figure out is it quite a constructive, is it not? This one is easy. They don't have a right to do that. So she doesn't have to wait for them to give her a package. She can force the issue. They don't have a right to do that. So even if it was less money, even if it was not quite as big a demotion, that's still illegal. Company does not have a right to do that, and she does not have to accept it. So if she wasn't sure, why well, is this a constructive dismissal? Is it not? Is it legal? Is it not? She could have easily taken that information and plugged it into the pocketemploymentlawyer.ca tool. Let's actually see how that looks mm. in a constructive dismissal situation. So. We know she's been there for five years or more. She would have picked that. Uh, what changed uh, Changed in her compensation? And has the employer done this before? The answer is no. So she sees the result in pocketemploymentlawyer.ca that since your compensation has changed significantly and this has not happened before, this is likely a constructive dismissal. It's as simple as that. In two minutes flat, less probably, she can find out that she's been constructively dismissed, that that's illegal, that the company doesn't have a right to do that, and then she can proceed right there to calculate the severance that she's owed. It's going to be significant amount of severance. If your employer ever puts you in that situation, you don't have to accept it. In fact, you should, because if she accepted it, guess what? Next time they'd want to change her pay, and now it's not 14000 now it's $24,000. She wouldn't have been able to do anything about it. That would have been something that's a very bad situation. It's, it's so crazy. I mean, those two things she did so quickly in the pocket employment lawyer, 25 years, $14,000. Not only is she not losing fourteen, she's going to be getting a mitt full of severance. Probably pay. two years pay because right. she could be owed a lot of money. That's why it's so important to stand up for your rights. If she hadn't done anything, she would have been given up her rights. That's a terrible situation. Again, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca is where you want to go or the phone call, 1-855-821. 5900. The emails come through help at employmentlawyer.ca and the website is quite simply employmentlawyer.ca as well. We'll catch you next time. Thank you so much. Employment Law Show. See you again. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you are owed right now. severancepaycalculator.com. You lost your job. They said they had a good reason, but you think you've been wrongfully dismissed. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca.